Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Okay, thank you, Scott Fletcher. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, your fortnightly webcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris, and with me tonight are Jesse. Hello. And Robert. Hello. All right, so let's go ahead and get this show started here. Tell me, Jesse, what have you been doing this week guitar-wise? Um, well, this week's been very busy, so mostly I haven't practiced a whole lot. But last week I was uh, trying to catch up on some things that uh, a friend of mine, Chris Culper, was working on. <laughs> some <laughs> some blues tunes. Um, so Key to the Highway and uh, Thrill is Gone. Um, I'm trying to remember what else I was working on. Did you do uh, uh, two Killing them. Floor? Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been working on Crossroads. Um, learning. It's not hard to play, but I'm learning how to play it right, which is a bit more difficult to do. Yes. <laughs> how about you, Robert? What have you been doing this week? Actually, I, uh, because of the Steam sale, picked up Rocksmith. Ooh, Thunderstorm. Uh, picked up Rocksmith, and so I'm going to take their 60-day supposed play this video game learn how to play the guitar challenge so over the next well will that be eight episodes more or less uh we'll see how this one goes see if their 60 day challenge actually works so i figured out hey, what the hell oh that'll be cool it'd be interesting to hear your progress on that i missed around with it with the xbox 360 for a while and i found out that at least for my guitar and the one you're using um the tuning was quite a little off. So when it said it was in tune, then I would bring out a tuner of my own, try it, and it was slightly out of tune. Um, well, that was which the I thought was weird. 2013 version. This is a a new update. Oh, uh, okay. And then I got it for the for the PC. So hopefully that cool. will take care of all the various lag issues that people were getting. You know, feeding it through their box into their right. TV and. Hopefully with the update, they'll fix some of those things. They said that they put a lot more effort into the learning tools. Um, okay. So we'll see what happens. I figured, hey, that'll give me something to talk about on the show. Yeah. No, I'm actually really quite interested to see how this plays out and see exactly what you can do after 60 days of uh, doing Rocksmith. Uh, <laughs> I think it'll be interesting. Yeah, I'm not saying it to be a smart ass. I'm, I'm being serious about that. I really want to see because I know you're coming in almost essentially cold, and so I really would love to see um, what what how this plays out. Like, are you know, are you able to do what they claim you can do in 60 days? Yeah, I'm really curious, and I figured, yeah, you know, couldn't hurt. I mean, it was it was like five bucks on the sale, so <laughs> you know. And if nothing else, hopefully it'll at least be in entertaining game so i'll be able to see whether it's a good game and a good learning tool and yeah, it'll be fun yeah cool yeah well let's see this week i've been um spending a lot of time with my new baby uh the highway one telecaster which i will talk about more on the next show since i wrote the show notes before i got the guitar i thought we'd go ahead and use <laughs> these show notes but to uh follow up with what um jesse and i talked about last show i did take the um cobalt strings off of my les paul and put back on um ernie ball super slinkies give those a shot and uh, I'm much happier with playing my guitar again, the Les Paul. Uh, with those cobalts on, it got to the point where I almost didn't want to play it anymore. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but um, I'm happy to be back on the regular strings. Uh, even though I've never tried Super Slinkies before, I put those on my Strat, which you can see behind me. Actually, you can see my Les Paul behind me, too. Uh, and then they both have <laughs> this and your 339 board. yeah yeah and I, I put new strings on the 339 too and I honestly don't remember what I put on them a uh, pack of random strings I bought at a, the local music store sale when they had strings for half off I just bought a whole bunch of brands I'd never tried before just to give them a shot uh, they're nice strings you're going to find the perfect string and then forget what it is yeah exactly <laughs> actually I think I have already found the perfect strings I had the local uh, luthier set up the 339 for me and I love the strings on it and I have not had a chance yet to go talk to him and say hey you know remember back in November when you set up my guitar what strings did you put on that thing 
<laughs> that might be lost to memory though at this point i don't know unless he uses the same strings for everything i don't know so all right well let's go ahead and uh, get the uh main portion of the show underway uh as I was cruising through Craigslist and eBay, that sounds terrible, cruising through Craigslist. Um, anyway, I was hanging out on Craigslist uh, and eBay. Looking That's not at much guitars. better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's terrible. Um, I was trying to figure out, you know, what do we want to talk about guitar-wise uh, for the show? And one of the things that popped up in my head as I was looking at these different guitars was there's quite a few of these artist models. Now, the one I have on the show notes is a Dave Mustaine kind of V-shaped thing from ESP. Um, we don't have to talk about that specific guitar, but I wanted to see, um, Jesse and, uh, Robert, what you guys thought about these artist models or these signature guitar series. Any thoughts on those? I don't know. I think they're, they're fun. I mean, why not? So I don't know what the business model is. Do they get a, uh, bigger cut? I have to assume they do. They must. Or do they just get some free guitars? I mean... You kind of it wonder what they're getting brand. out of this. If, yeah. If you're a huge name, like, you know, Van Halen's got, well, he's had his lines of guitars from, like, Music Man made them, and uh, now he's got, I think Charvel's got a series of various versions of his striped Strat, Frankenstrat, you know. Right. And he probably gets a sizable chunk because he's Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, I'm sure he's doing well for himself right now. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it'd be nice if at least the artist got a nicer cut. So, yeah. I mean, if their name's helping sell yeah. the guitar. Um, I don't know. Have you had a chance to, to play with uh, a signature one and a non-signature one to see if there's an actual difference in sound or how it feels? So, sometimes there's not that much difference. Like, I mean, you look at all the different signature versions of a Les Paul, for instance, because, I mean, how many bazillions people play Pauls, you know? And... Uh, there's some slight variations. Maybe they have a different wiring scheme or maybe they have a slight um, uh, difference in the back of the neck or something, the way they've either worn it in or had it done on their personal guitar or something. But then there's not really, it's still a Les Paul. <laughs> it's still constructed like a Les Paul, you know? Mm -hmm. And so how much is something like that worth over the cost of like a, whatever the standard version would be versus something like a Van Halen where it's like, that's pretty unique and well it, it's not now but at the time it was you know a single humbucker guitar with a floyd on it with like no wiring except a volume control and and a god-awful paint scheme <laughs> <You know? laughs> so yeah i mean i don't know and sometimes they're really good guitars and sometimes they're sort of like well i'm gonna slap my name on this sort of midline guitar uh, okay. so that you can sell them to younger people and um I shouldn't say younger people, but beginners or whatever. So I, I don't know. So a, it, see, I haven't looked really closely. Most of the signatures I saw were like extremely expensive. But you're saying they G10. also will slap it on some of the middle tier stuff. Yeah, and especially when a maker has like different lines, like you'll see whether in like Gibson slash Epiphone, or you'll see like ESP slash LTD. You know, so you know the cheaper version, the Epiphone or the LTD version, they'll have you know, a signature name, but then, and, and it'll kind of have the same differences, you know, so if they use a particular pickup or a particular wiring scheme, they'll I mean, make sure that that's on there, but it won't be of the quality level that like that guy's guitar is. So then the question is, you know, do you like it? Cause you know, it's like anything else. I mean, you like it because it's that sound that you think you're getting. Cause of course you're not going to get that sound if you don't have his amp and his effects and his fingers. So, right. or, um, is it just because I identify that guy? Right. I don't know. It's, it depends on the person. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking the um, the Gibson has the um, Lucille, right? Right. Maybe King's Lucille, and uh, yeah, it might, maybe it has all the specs that the one that BB plays. But you know, you're not going to pull off the vibrato like BB is going to. <laughs> no. Not on that guitar. It's, it's just not going to happen unless you're unless you're BB King. You're not going to do right. it. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. Uh, I have kind of always seen them as um, I shouldn't maybe not exactly like this, but close to basically wearing a sports jersey with somebody else's last name on it. Yeah, kinda. you know, kind of like I kind of feel like that for whatever reason. Like, you know, I, I, I don't want B.B. King's guitar. I want Chris's guitar and I want to sound like Chris. And maybe that will be heavily influenced by B.B. King. I don't know. But I guess I, I don't want a guitar with somebody else's name on it. 
Hmm. Well, that's true. And it's actually, I, even when I was like a heavy Eddie Van Halen fan back in the 80s and everything, and I got a Kramer, of course, <laughs> and he was pushing Kramers. But uh, I didn't go for like the Beretta, which was like the Van Halen model with the one angled pickup and all that, because I did want other, you know, options. You know, I like the neck humbucker and all that. Sure. So, yeah, you're right. I mean, you can be influenced by somebody, but uh, still want to have your own thing. Well, yeah, and to answer Robert's question about business model, I know Gibson, um, or I believe Gibson, has um, sort of this practice of actually not selling certain signature guitars. Like um, Lizzie Hale, for example, from Hailstorm, they made her a, a signature Explorer, but you can't buy it. Hmm. It's the only one, the one that she has. And maybe one day that will sell it, but right now she's got the only one. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. So maybe they're trying to, you know, build the hype machine up a little bit and get people really interested in the guitar, or maybe they have absolutely no plans of ever selling it. I, I simply don't know. But uh, she's pretty cool. All right. Um, well, why don't we go ahead and move on and talk about sort of the main topic for today's show, and that is uh, how to buy an amp. I thought we'd talk about that today because last time, Jesse and I talked about how to buy a guitar, and that turned out to be pretty well. And so for people who are shopping for new gear, you know what happens after you buy a guitar? You buy an amp. Sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the question here is, you know, what uh, what do you look for when buying an amp? And uh, I think the number one thing you look for is, as always, what sound are you trying to make? Mm -hmm. Or sounds. Or sounds. Yes, yes, because it could be more than one, and uh, let that dictate all of your choices from there because a lot of people get hung up on tube versus solid state and i guess my my philosophy is find the amp that sounds the way you want to sound mm -hmm. and not worry about who makes it or what the electronics are inside that's true that's a good way to think so as you go online you read the forums you'll see a lot of people you know espousing the whole tube uh, guitar and how it was it's like the guitar excuse me guitar amp and how it's like the standard it's the best type of amp you could possibly have and maybe some people feel that way but uh, I've heard some pretty good solid state amps yep yeah so this is uh, one of my kind of like I'm an odd bird here because I'm like the king of modeling yeah I like you know 90% of the time I'm probably playing through a model or not even like a real new one it's an old Digitech GNX 3000 four pedal thing um, which I think the models are good and they go through my stereo system and that's what I play and my other my amps are primarily modelers too I have a PV Viper and I have a uh, little PV Viper <laughs> you know and a little Marshall one but um, yeah I mean the thing is I think modelers are probably 90 95% of the way to good some good sounds and I don't think if you a b them against like a real tube amp um, that when you're playing them, it's quite there. But I think once you mix it in with the band or put it on a recording or something like that, I think people can't tell the difference. And mm -hmm. I think there's a ton of recordings out there with you know made with pods and other various modelers that mm -hmm. um, argue that fact. And um, yeah, so it's close enough for me because I mean I'm more about like the music and the notes and everything like that. I don't get too as caught up, I guess, as some people with the sound. And yeah, there's some great solid state amps out there too, you know, that um, either have aped the tube sound or, hey, why not something new and, you know, uh, make a sound of its own. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, it's really what you like. The other thing about modelers that are cool is if you have a tube amp, there's a few good sounds. If you have a modeler, you can get a close approximation of a ton of stuff. So yeah. if you're the kind of person who wants a lot of variety, there you go without spending of course a ton of money on various amps um yeah, getting out a razor a, blade right <laughs> yeah there's a um a couple of sort of the hybrid modeling tube amps out there i think fender has the super champ xd i think mm -hmm. it is that has uh, onboard effects but there's also the tube sound uh, mm -hmm. i have to say the first real amp i purchased was a fender mustang one mm -hmm. and i love that thing yeah. It's a nice sound amp, actually. It's a yeah. great amp. You can, I mean, there's so many different models on that amp, some of which are Fender models, some of them are not. And then coupled with that with the Fuse software, if you want to hook up your laptop while you play, 
you can set up all kinds of effects, quote unquote, pedals and all kinds of things. And you can customize that amp to just about anything you want it to sound like. And to my ears, it sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Um, yeah. Now, the one thing I have noticed with the modeling amp that I have, and I don't know if this is because it's the Mustang 1, if maybe the Mustang 3 would behave differently, is when I put my Boss multi-effects pedals up on the um, on the Mustang, mm-hmm. I don't quite like the sound I get from those effects as opposed to when I plug the Boss pedal into the front man that I have, mm-hmm. which is also a solid-state amp, but it's not a modeling amp. Uh, right. It has a drive and a, and a clean. That's pretty much what you got. Yeah. Uh, built-in reverb, I think, too. And I don't know if it's my ears or if it's the reality of of maybe for some reason the software, that Fuse software just works better with the Mustang. I have no idea. But I, I do notice a difference with the effects pedal, the multi-effects pedal. Right. And it may be something independent of that circuitry too. Like maybe the input impedance is different between the amps and so it's going to react different yep. to your effects. Yeah. 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 So well, what, I, um, I happen to like playing. Uh, I, I will use my phone as my amp. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, great point. Yeah, sure. Uh, I went and got a little iRig. Have you seen mm-hmm. that thing? Yeah, it I have one. Yeah, just allows you to plug your uh, your guitar, your iPhone, and then <laughs> you see <laughs> the amp built into that with little yeah. crappy headphones or little earbuds. Um, but it's convenient. I can take it to my office and keep it in the closet. Uh, Works really good. So, because as the uh, sole Android user here, I feel so left out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm off that train. So they <laughs> lured me in with their crappy battery life and their intermittent crashes as I rooted my phone. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. No, I adopted too early. I think was my problem. Hmm. Yeah, no, I have the iRig as well. I have it hooked up. I use it with my iPad. I use it with my iPhone. And uh, yeah, it works well. You use the little iRig software that comes with it. It's basically a modeling amp at that point. Um, the one thing I don't like about it for the iPad is that I don't think you can play out through the iPad speakers. You have to play out through headphones or hook your amp up to the iRig. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, I liked it because it was cheap. Um, which was my, cause I got mine used, I think it was 20 bucks. Um, mm. and then just use free software with it. So mm. I kind of liked that cause I was just kind of wanted to screw around some. And then I found the best way to buy an amp is wait till your friend Chris gives you an amp. Uh, <laughs> I, I found that to be an excellent method myself. <laughs> yeah. I, got an amp I really love that way. <laughs> yeah. I think last year for your birthday, I got you a Mustang one. Yeah. It was, uh. It was great. I, I love I, that amp. Oh, it's it's one of those things, you know, like it's highly highly with a product. Like when you have something and then when you think about giving it to a friend, you know, like a, a present for a friend that you choose something that you already have because it's like, oh, well, you know, I really like this thing and I want you to have it too. It's uh, I, I'm just a huge believer of the Mustang one. And in fact, I would love to one day upgrade to the Mustang three because it has a larger speaker size. And I was wondering if we could talk mm-hmm. a little bit about the effect of speaker size. Um, so maybe some of our, our audience may not be aware of uh, what kind of a different spe- a larger speaker may make from a smaller speaker. Big time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no doubt. Because, I mean, if, I mean, if you A-B them, even amps that have the same electronics, um, you'll get a lot more, essentially, bass you know, mm-hmm. from the bigger speaker. And although you typically don't get as many as much treble... The trouble we're talking about is kind of beyond the typical guitar range anyway. So essentially, you just get more bass. And this is, I think this is one of the reasons that people like like real amps a lot of times is because whether it's a Twin 12 or even like a Raging, like, you know, Marshall Stack or Salvano or something like that, it's like they like that visceral thing where you stand in front of them, you hit a power chord, and it's like, it's like the Doc Brown or the scene in the. Yeah, you, you know, can Back feel it. Future, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and, um, even if it's not that much, it's, it's still visceral. I mean, you feel it, and it's like, uh, you know, like you say. And uh, you don't really get that with smaller amps, you know, even really high-quality modeling amps. Right. So yeah. right. I've noticed... Of uh, course, that goes away when you after you record the stuff and you play back the recording. That kind of goes away a lot, but it's still there. But, I haven't gotten to try it much with, with amps, but I know with stereo systems in my house... Mm-hmm. Um, you guys can't see because the video is not working for YouTube, but everybody watching on YouTube can see. I live in a wood house, and uh, 
it makes a big difference. The acoustics here are not as forgiving as um, I, I remember it being in a house that actually had drywall uh, and carpet. <laughs> I have wood floors, wood walls, mm -hmm. wood ceilings. Uh, wow, and I don't know if you guys can hear the rain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I have a skylight right above my head, and the rain's coming down hard. Yeah, uh, and which Robert's probably means northwest. my house is leaking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah uh, you're just northwest of us, so we'll be getting it soon. Yeah, but um, bigger speakers definitely have, uh, are the way to go. Yeah, the other um, spec that people will talk about with um, amps, of course, is the wattage, how much power. And so when you're buying a tube amp versus a solid state amp, those numbers are different things. You know, a five watt tube amp is a very different thing from a five watt solid state amp. Um, so, you know, I would recommend anyone who's looking at buying uh, an amp is to keep in mind what space you're playing in. If you're like me and you're a bedroom guitarist and plays for no one but their dog and occasionally their wife <laughs> when they can stomach it, um, <laughs> then, you know, you know, probably need the the hundred watt amp. Not that I don't want a hundred watt amp, but I probably don't need a hundred <laughs> watt. <laughs> and of course, it scales appropriately with a tube amp uh, as well. You want to, you know, a good little maybe a small five watt amp will probably take care of my needs just fine. Mm. True. Well, actually, with a tube amp, a lot of people think a smaller amp is a better deal because the whole idea of tubes is to make them push them, make yeah. them glow, you know. And and if you have a hundred watt amp. You got to get that sickly loud, <laughs> you yes. know, to really push right. the power amp tubes. Whereas if you have a little, you know, twenty watt triode type of thing, um, you can push it pretty hard. And it'll still be pretty sickly loud in a house, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but maybe you won't get the neighbors mad at you. So, um, yeah. Well, and one of the things that I've learned, and, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, um, is that some of these tube amps will have a master and a volume. And mm -hmm. so the idea is you can crank up the volume, but keep the master low and still get some of that break, break up effect, um, mm -hmm. from what I understand. And so it will be one way around rattling the windows, but let's face it every once in a while, it's pretty cool to rattle the windows. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when the significant other is out of the house, just crank it up and see how loud you can tolerate your amp. Um, mm -hmm. make sure the dog's out of the house too. At that point, yeah. I had one, <laughs> I had this one amp that, um, when my acoustic is hanging, and you probably can't see the acoustic behind me right now, but when the acoustic is hanging, I'll put the little hu um, the little uh, sponge in there, right? The little um, humidity thing. And this is one amp where every time I hit the note F, the mm -hmm. low F, right? That little uh, um, humidity uh, thing vibrates right out if, if I'm around seven <laughs> on my front man. <laughs> and so I was playing real loud when I, my wife was on a business trip. And I was playing something, and all of a sudden I hear a thunk. I'm like, what, what, you know, what the hell is that? I look on the floor, and there's the little sponge holder thing. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, whoa, what was that? So I put it back in, keep playing, and all of a sudden, you know, pop, out it pops again. I was like, what's going on? Um, so then I quickly realized, oh, wait, F is doing that. And so I spent the next, you know, five or ten minutes playing F, then picking up the humidifier, humidity thing, putting it back, <laughs> playing F again. Like, this is so cool. You know? like, the essence of repeatability, I guess. Um, oh, you're such a science geek. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it was fun, you know. The higher octave F didn't do it, just a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, all right. So, uh, anything else that um, we'd like to say about uh, purchasing amps? I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> got it covered yeah just go to a place play a lot of amps see what you like that's true one thing you could do is um just real quick back to the modeler idea and, sure. and since modelers tend to have models of the more popular amps um go to a modeler first and just try like a baseman and a twin and a marshall and a soldano and a, you know with these models just to give you the general sense of what that amp is trying to be whether it's like a scoop death metal sound typically obviously any amp you can change the tonality quite a bit but this tends to be like among their better sounds because what they're famous for and then once you get something hey that's a good sound head on over to that real amp and go crazy and spend a thousand dollars yeah yeah <laughs> if that's your thing well yeah. you know that's why i bought the multi-effects pedal mm -hmm. you know you spend a couple hundred bucks on 50 different pedals 
mm-hmm. all in one, figure out what sound you like, and then go invest in the specific ones. If you think that the pedals will produce a better sound than the multi effects, if you can tell a difference with your ear, then go for it. If not, just be happy with the multi effects. Same thing with the modeler. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, then that wraps up this show. All right. So until next time, boys and girls, just remember, keep picking and grinning. Thanks. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy. Jesse at Jester 700 and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music.